Want to use a PGR in your cereals but have no time for a separate pass? Manipulator PGR can be applied as early as one tiller. Just add it to your herbicide to reduce lodging, increase harvest efficiency, and maximize yields. Talk to your retailer for more info and to confirm acceptable tank mixes. Hi, this is Real Agriculture. And I am Amber Bell, here with Stacey Domoluski, who is the Science and Extension Coordinator for the Beef Cattle Research Council. So we're going to talk a little bit of today about tips and tricks for putting cattle out on spring pastures. And yeah, hi, thanks for coming, Stacey. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm excited for this conversation today. Me too. So maybe we'll just like dive right into it. Um, I know producers are, well, up here in Northern Alberta, we're slowly getting some grass, but I don't think many people have turned out cattle yet. So this is probably really good timing for us. I don't know about you down in Saskatchewan. We just got a little bit of rain here. So I think everybody is, I have used the term, we have felt a collective sigh of relief around here that we might be all right. And so, yeah, people are definitely starting to think about moving those cows out. It's um, been a bit of a slower spring here, but I think if that slow spring comes with rain, everybody's pretty happy about then it. Then we're all happy. Exactly. Uh, so how do we know when a pasture is ready to have livestock turned out onto it? Yeah. So a couple things to think about. The first thing to think about is how is that pasture resource when you pulled the cows last? And so if it was one of the things you were using late into the fall, it's probably not going to be the first pasture you want to use in the spring. And so really, you know, kind of looking back as to how was that used last year um, is kind of the first indicator. The second thing is to look at the actual plants themselves. And so um, plant height isn't the greatest indicator because depending on what forage species you have, obviously they're all going to vary. But if we can look for kind of that three leaf stage, that's another good indicator that, yeah, this grass can probably tolerate some grazing and handle some grazing um, pressure. And then I think the third thing to think about is your pasture type. And so whether you have natives or tame species or whatever else you happen to have in the region you're in, um, you know, natives can be a bit more resilient coming back after drought, uh, but their peak production does tend to be a little bit later in the year. And so trying to think through all of the pasture sources you have and um, each of them might have a slightly different time when it's ready to get going. And what are the optimal stocking rates for spring grazing? I know everyone kind of does things differently. Um, how do they vary depending on the pasture conditions? Yeah, so this is a great question. And I think it's the question everybody's trying to figure out this time of year. The thing I would really caution people is your ideal stocking rate last year or even at a different season is not necessarily going to be the same. It's very dependent on what you're experiencing this year, kind of the rainfall situation, how your pasture has recovered. I know a lot of people are kind of rebounding from drought. And so those things need to be taken into account. Um, I think the easiest way is to start by really understanding your carrying capacity. Um, if this is something new to you, we have a really great tool on beefresearch.ca um, that is a calculator that will allow you to go through. It gives you some metrics to look at. Um, and then you can actually go in, put your own numbers in and get a stocking rate out of that based on your area. That'll kind of help you bridge that gap because I think it's so dependent on what that forage is looking like for this season um, and how your conditions are that to give, you know, a great a one size fits all recommendation obviously doesn't work. So. so within that calculator, does it have metrics for the soil type and geography of where you are in, in the province? Yeah. So there's two ways you can use it. One is more of a general way. So it's just putting in some things, you know, about your pasture. So the varieties that are in there, where you're located, um, you know, your average rainfall, those types of things. And it'll kind of spit out a, an average answer. It also gives you the option and kind of walks you through if you want to get really nerdy about it. Um, and it gives you the option to actually take clippings in your field, how to dry those down, measure that and calculate your carrying capacity accordingly. That's very cool. I love getting nerdy about pasture land. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> and what does rotational grazing in the spring look like? And why or would you recommend it? Yeah, I think any time we can rotationally graze, I think there's benefits to it. Um, the thing I think some people get caught up in is sometimes we hear rotation grazing and we think like 
300 paddocks and we're moving cows every day and those types of things, which is great. Um, but also you can start small. So anytime you can break a pasture down into smaller groups, what that does is it allows the part you're not grazing to get more recovery time and more rest, which is always beneficial. Um, so more paddocks is more rest, but ultimately, you know, so even splitting that pasture in half will have a benefit. I think when we're rotational grazing um, in the spring, remembering that that plant is still getting going, it's still waking up. And so we don't want to hit it too hard. You don't want to level everything completely. Um, kind of the rule, which works all seasons, but kind of that take half, leave half mm -hmm. um, is a great rule of thumb for figuring out how much you should do and how often you should be moving them. I would say in the spring, don't hesitate to move them a little sooner than you might otherwise. Um, we really don't want to push that pasture really hard because then you're preventing coming back to it again. Right. Um, yeah. The other thing to think about is litter is always beneficial. So the more litter we can have, so that's the dead plant material of the stuff that's trampled. Um, it's not waste at all. It conserves rain and snow melt. Um, if you have more litter, you're better able to rebound from drought. Um, I was talking with Dr. Ed Bork out of Edmonton the other day, and he threw out the statistic that um, grasslands without litter are 25 to 60 percent, um, will grow 25 to 60 percent less forage. So don't be afraid to trample some of that and leave it there. <laughs> I think that's a really good tip because too often we think there's so much grass left out there and you know of course like resources are tight and people think that they mm -hmm. need to push it as hard as they can go and you forget like long-term planning you're going to be looking at better grass growth if you can leave that as much behind as you possible so yeah that's yeah, a really good I tip think that's really important especially in the spring like obviously long term in terms of five six years but also just thinking your spring is kind of the first time you're getting out there and so you want to use this grass again in the season, you know, you, you want to conserve it and be a little more conservative at the beginning of the, the season. Definitely. Um, is there anything to look out on the cattle health side when on spring grass? So I think the biggest thing is around body condition. And so watching that those cows aren't losing weight um, is a, a big thing, especially for anybody who was dealing with drought in the last year. Um, the pasture just might not be, you know, ready yet, especially if you're pushing those cows out a little bit early. So monitoring body condition score, um, especially anything you're breeding, um, just paying attention to where they're at. Um, the other thing I think to think about in terms of turning those cattle out, sometimes we tend to think that grass for the most part has everything we need. Sometimes that's true, but also it never hurts to mineral um, supplement with some minerals as well on pasture, um, especially once again, keeping those cows rebreeding. Um, and then, of course, the final thing is around water testing. And it's very easy to think that, oh, we've never had a problem with water. And so we don't need to test. But there's a lot of benefits that can come from testing your water, understanding your water source. Um, whether that's changing your mineral supplement or changing how your cattle are drinking water that might actually improve cattle performance, um, mm -hmm. as well as prevent a wreck. I think that's, you know, the obvious reason to water um, test, but that would be um, a recommendation. And for a mineral package, is there something you'd recommend or would you recommend soil testing before going for a mineral package? What What would you recommend there? Yeah, so what I would recommend is working with a nutritionist, um, especially one that's local to your area. They'll know kind of um, the things they should be looking for that are specific to what your needs are. And so um, most nutritionists would have a specific product that they would recommend or be able to help you through the testing process uh, to know what you need. That's great. Those are excellent tips. Is there anything that you would like to say to producers going into the, the grass season? Yeah, um, I don't think I have much to add. I think the thing that, you know, to always keep in mind is it's great to have a plan, but that plan can change. And so, you know, right now, I think uh, we're going in, we're feeling pretty great. There's been some rains across a lot of the prairies. And so people are feeling pretty optimistic, but just recognizing that as the season goes on, the grazing plan is going to have to change and adopt based on what your forage resources are. And being willing to change will help um, your grass and help your pasture succeed in the long term. 
That's a great thing to remember. Well, thank you very much. And that was Stacey Domalewski uh, on Real Agriculture.